from Cowell. C-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Excuse my pronunciation if it's Cowell or Cow. Cowell. <laughs> anyway, so we're at the um, RV park here that uh, they put on um, by the lines, as you can see at the back. It's a $10 um, drop in the box, honesty box. There's uh, great little facilities. There's a little uh, a book exchange behind me. There's um, fire pits down on the bottom here. And there is some supplied firewood. That's for this area only, of course. Bunches of uh, spots all the way around here. There must be 25, 30 spots roughly. Um, nice big wide open areas. I'll move around here so you can see where we're parked. We're just over in the corner there. There's only three. There was actually four of us here um, last night. So it's nice and quiet at this time of the year. But of course, one little downside is that you've got to rug up because it gets a little chilly. Last night, it was absolutely windy as and it did uh, rain a little bit. And um, so we're catching up on a little bit of solar there for today. Well, and I've got little Ginny running for some higher appliances at the moment. Um, beautiful little place, Cal. So we're go I'm going to go for a little walk and uh, show you the bits of Cal. Um, oh, before we leave too, I should also point out that you can get, um, there is water supply here as well, but not obviously to your vans. You've got to go and ferry it from the corner, which is just over in this area here. So follow me as we go exploring Cal. Oh, just tucked in here out of the wind. I've just made it to the marina, a little hard to see there, the marina or the boat ramp of Cal. There's a little walk here. So I'm in this little gazebo that's been put up by the lions. And we're gonna have a little walk out there. But behind me, you can see the little signboards, uh, sort of uh, some of the species, the swimmer crab, and uh, over here you got the, the yellow fin whiting and the King George whiting. And I thought I'd just read a little excerpt here of the, uh, the Pacific oysters. So the Pacific oysters is a hardy species with a growth rate and high production rate. They were introduced into South Australia in 1969 from Japan. The oysters take 12 months to grow in the water and the shells are usually oval or pear shape. Um, they vary in form depending on what they're attached to. They generally have a whitish outer shell and the inside shell is usually porcelain white. They have an extremely strong abductor muscle which closes the shell when threatened. And trust me, I've tried, and I'm not a shucking expert, and that was shucking expert. Um, you can get a, a knife, a little special, like a spoon, and you've got to force that in to try and break them uh, free. So there was a, um, a shed close to the, the park where we're staying, where you can buy like a dozen oysters for 12 bucks. Closed on a weekend, my luck. But then also, um, I've got to shuck them, so. Yes, I could have made a big embarrassment of myself. Anyway, we'll go for a quick walk out in the windy condition here of the mangrove walk. Whoa, see, told you, that's why I was inside. So yeah, this gets you up close and personal to the mangroves. So I'm probably around about, I'd say about five feet above the mangroves. And uh, yeah, you see a pretty healthy mangrove population. So what? This would be an absolute beautiful spot in summer. Probably gets around about 35, nearly 40 degrees sometimes out this neck of the woods. But I tell you right now, coming from that direction over there is an Arctic blast. <laughs> and uh, yes, it's nice and picturesque, but it's cold. See how it goes out on the jetty, eh? Well, all I can say is thank heavens for the polar shelter. At the moment I'm uh, nestled in here and it is beautiful, but obviously if I go out a few seconds out here, whoa, yep, she's blowing. Um, so you wouldn't believe it, but this is a beautiful sheltered little harbour. It's called the Franklin Harbour. Natural and uh, was quite popular for a lot of um, uh, boats to come on in here in the early days. It was a nice shelter. I read that the, uh, there was an abundance of prawns out in the uh, Spencer Gulf and bits and pieces. And back then, of course, the ships weren't terribly uh, as modern as they are now. It was big and with all their snap chilling and all that sort of stuff. And uh, this was a actual quite a big base for the, uh, the prawn trawlers. But uh, sadly, with the, uh, the modernization and uh, 
we're getting more advanced, those ships don't require to, to dock here, they can be, I think they're down in Port Lincoln, so we'll probably see a few prawn trawlers, along with a lot of other type trawlers down in that area, which is a bigger town. But uh, yeah, still a beautiful little marina down in there for uh, some of the private vessels, it's all quite modern. This uh, is an older style jetty, but it's, uh, it's a wooden jetty, which is hanging up really, really well. So uh, yeah, I've managed to get out here and brave it. But uh, yeah, thank heavens for a little shelter at the end here that's been able to hold off that wind. Yesterday, we got in and felt a little peckish. Dude was craving fish and chips. We came down here to the fish box kiosk or the oyster shack. Uh, he's open Monday to Sunday, um, eight o'clock through to three. And trust me, I enjoyed what was the nicest fish I've had, beautifully battered. Um, so it might not look much on the outside, but on the inside is what matters. And it is very, very nice. There's a nice little uh, area you can eat it there or if the weather's nice, pop out into those outdoor areas. But uh, no, the, uh, the food there was really, really nice. Highly recommended. They've done amazing things out here. They've got a uh, beautiful bit of, uh, well, obviously a bit of reclaimed land, I suppose, over here. They're grassing it and uh, turning it into some nice shrubberies and things. Great little uh, boat ramp, of course, and the marina over there. And then as I swing around here, the kids' play area is looking pretty damn good as well. I've got a uh, little undercover area here, they've got bouncy pillow up over there, and then I suppose in the summer months they run a bit of a water park. So yeah, they've done wonders here with the little kids playing area. They've got to absolutely love this. Bit of a bike path over there too, with the youngster biking around. Great little play area here. Nice little uh, undercover area there for the adults while they're watching. They've got a uh, barbecue area. And then jumping pillow coming into view in the back there. And this monstrosity, how cool is that? I suppose in the summer months, get that cranking. A beaut little water slide in town. Really nice. Not at this time, but buddy, was it 14 degrees odd? <laughs> but that is a pretty spectacular little credit to the town. Well, here's a beauty. Check this hotel out. This is the Franklin Hotel, the ha Franklin Harbour Hotel. I believe it was uh, back in the late 1800s, I think 1881 or something it was built. Beautiful location. All right, I found it, the Black Stump. Now, this was a prank back in 1972 that was put in between two pubs. And the saying goes is that the best pub this side of the Black Stump this isn't the original black stump that was in the prank because it got stolen. So they have replaced it with this one here. This one weighs 2,060 kilos, but it uh, now sort of signifies the uh, land battles uh, the, of the, uh, the clearing of the land around this area. So um, there it is, the black stump. The thing I can't work out is the commercial hotels over there and down there is the Franklin Harbor Hotel. So it's not exactly parked in between the pubs so you can tell which side is the best side, best pub. <laughs> anyway, tick, found it. Couldn't help but notice walking past the police station here in Cal. Tucked out the back is the jail. Well, somehow I think it's the jail. What do you reckon? You wouldn't want to be in that jail uh, during a, uh, a very sunny day. You'll come up, come out with jail bar sunburn marks. <laughs> okay, we're all saddled up and ready to leave Cal. We've spent three amazing days here in Cal. It's been beautiful down to the, uh, the marina, the jetty, the seafood, the pubs, the shops. Fantastic um, treasure shop in Cal. It's on the commercial hotel side, about halfway, the down, halfway down as you're heading towards the jetty. Uh, so it's the left hand side. It was awesome. Um, 
there's jade in town as well or just out of town a huge jade deposit it's um, pretty pretty if you like uh, rocks and things um, what else was there there was uh, some nice little beach walks we've walked everywhere it's really cool but one thing we haven't um, shown you or unless Jude's already already put it on the, the vid in a different order here it is the cowl silos a little shout out to if you're watching from overseas in bits and pieces and you've got some nice little art that's either on silos or water tanks or something drop me a line we know about them all in Australia but out there um, in you know whether you're in the United States or the UK or um, China or um, Vietnam we've got a lot of uh, viewers from Vietnam and India we've got some of these uh, painted murals love to see them anyway we're on our way we're going inland up there into the hills to another relaxing spot so stay tuned Well, that was a quick trip from Cowell to here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have a hell of a job trying to pronounce all these names. This one's, uh, I'll call it Yudikaini. Yeldikaini, Jude, please. <laughs> a little uh, subtitle there for that one. Um, it's 5.5 k's from Cleve. Um, that's our next destination after here. Now, it's not very far, but we just wanted to experience a little bit of a uh, bit more of the, the peace and quiet of the bush and this is a little donation camp out this way so there's a, a beautiful i'll show you um the facilities over there there is a flushing toilet available thank you very much it's from the lions they've done a really nice little area there's a little book exchange there's a gas barbie up there um and there's uh, some fire rings around as well so a magic spot especially on a day like today look at it it is beautiful Seeing the beautiful green farms, the canola fields, I think it is, um, with the yellow flowers starting to come out, it's looking magic, beautiful picture, perfect out here at the moment. And on a beautiful blue sky, sunny day. Now in behind me is the wet. Now I'll tell you a bit more about that later as well as I learn. Um, but it was built back in 1912, I believe, to service the township of Arno, I think it is. So um, yeah, just thought I'd drop it in and just say this is where we are. We're just going to make ourselves comfortable and uh, settle into this little spot for a one night stay and then go and check out the showgrounds in Cleve. Looks really good. So uh, we'll show you a bit more of the history around here and the facilities before we leave. It's day two. <laughs> Man, where time goes, eh? Last night was great. We had a nice open fire and uh, we did some damper and we did some um, lamb shanks did pretty good i redeemed myself i cooked a pizza the other night and uh burnt the absolutely bejesus out of it so i wasn't very popular but jude reckons i've uh, improved <laughs> so it was a nice night starry night but as promised i said i was going to show you around this um little uh little campsite it's really really nice it's a uh, sort of like a rest area campsite um i'm gonna start here as you can see got chairs and tables great rubbish rubbish facilities um we've got the barbecue the gas barbecue over here which is fantastic could have used that but uh insisted on the camp oven in here a little gazebo with some information which i'll fill you in real soon about um some flushing toilets down there how good's that and uh down here somewhere there's a well, where is it about where that truck's parked i think yeah in front of that truck is um a beautiful uh, little uh open fireplace you can enjoy as well anyway Let's get into the old history, shall we? That's what I'm trying to pronounce. <laughs> um, 
in or oh, before 1912 there was obviously a bit of a uh, a shortage of water around here they were doing the um the the crops the wheat and of course a bit of the farming as well and um there was also a little township right? i believe it was called arno arno township or arno bay or something so um the surveyors came around and found this little spot over here there was a nice um, they call it an intermittent stream so obviously when it rains there's water when it doesn't there's not and they found it a perfect little spot of about three spots they did do three three weirs um, this was probably the major one and the most historic ones that's left so um, 1912 they started construction which uh, there's some little photos there's some photos over here of the construction and um, yeah so it was quite a significant little uh, Little uh, achievement. So the where are we? The weir is 12 meters high. The length is 100 meters long, um, and it was basically down a brass tack. It was able to uh, hold 164 million gallons of water. Um, there was a little problem when they did make it. Um, it did leak a little bit, so they actually um, went further down and created another weir to catch that leakage, and then pop that back into the main pipe. And I'll go up and show you the wheelhouse because the wheelhouse is uh, pretty specky. So there we have the large, I think it was the main sluice gate, and then you had the, the main water pipe, and then you had the lower water pipe. And those wheels controlled obviously these long pipes that went down into the bottom and controlled the on and off beautiful the other side of the weir this is the business end so uh, it looks quite low in water. I'm not too sure when was the last time it came up over the wall, but well, the, according to those uh, photographs, the last time was in 1994 or something, the mid nineties. Um, but those photographs are all fairly old and the, the, the information board hasn't been updated, I guess. So um, it would be a fair sight to have, you know, where I'm stand, standing up to water. I can't help but think that this reminds me a lot of the episode that we did in Western Australia in Kulkani. Have a look it up, uh, Niagara Dam, a similar sort of effort. It was a bigger dam and of course it was a lot harder work back then and probably, I think it was a lot older as well that one. Um, they ended up building a dam and uh, basically by the time they built it they found a, uh, a bore and uh, it was obsolete it wasn't uh, required anymore so uh, a similar sort of history to this one here so there you go just excuse the wind as I swing around the breeze is getting up this morning but it does look absolutely fantastic it's just you and me baby please you keep me breathing my heart won't hold back it's trust in everything it's trust in One last thing before we disappear for uh, Cleved. Shout out to the uh, old mate behind me there, uh, Nathan. Thank you very much for subscribing. He's uh, 
got a day off today and uh, thought he'd come down to this lovely little campsite and start a, a fire and see the afternoon go by. Um, yeah, shout out to uh, the uh, custodians of this park, uh, the lions. Man, they've done an awesome job um, keeping this nice and clean and tidy. I must say I was a little disappointed when we got here, uh, some uh, uh, messy camper or whatever had been using the gas barbecue and uh, honestly I wouldn't, I wouldn't have cooked on it, it was pretty grubby and uh, I was going to maybe give it a little clean. But uh, no sooner had we uh, sort of arrived here, somebody uh, turned up and I could see that he was uh, going in there and giving the toilets a clean. They were spotless when we went in, so that was pretty good. But by the time he left, I had a look at the barbie and uh, it was schmick. So uh, they put a lot of effort into it and well deserved of a, a donation in the uh, camp. So uh, when you come to places like these and there is a donation box, um, give them a little thumbs up and uh, pop, a, pop a few uh, coins or notes in the, uh, in the box. And um, also respect and keep it clean and tidy. There's rubbish bins and recycle bins around here for a reason. So uh, use it and uh, make sure these places stay the way they are. And also bring your own firewood in as well. Um, they're doing huge amounts of efforts around here to um, replant and get some new trees going. And the last thing they want is people cutting more down. So uh, do yourself a favour. And when you come to spots, you know, call into uh, Mitre 10 or Bunnings or something like that and carry a bag of firewood around with you or Get some old dead material that might be laying around the road as you're driving. But uh, yeah, look after areas. Love it. See you down the road.